Trooper, Rogue Trooper, Quartz Zone Massacre for the Wii. After your squadron is, whatever, military terms, killed off in an ambush, you avenge the death of them, which is on account of a traitor general in your own forces. And that's basically the story here. The traitor general isn't really much of a character, he's just the villain that you're supposed to hate, and he's got, you know, a second in command. There isn't a lot plot-wise that really surprises here. And though the game is about this all-out war, you do not win the war overall. The game is over once you've you know, gotten revenge for your fallen comrades. And the gameplay is essentially Splinter Cell Light. You know, it's that kind of tactical shooter, some stealth, much less stealth than your average Splinter Cell title. And you do have some gadgets, but you have far, far fewer than, again, any Splinter Cell title. So what is the real attraction here? What makes this not just average? It's not the motion control use. Avatar beats it out on that. In fact, there's hardly any motion control use in this, but I'll get back to that. No, it's the universe. It's based on the 2000 AD comic series same as with Judge Dredd. I'm not entirely sure if this is the exact same world, but it certainly is a similar one, post-apocalyptic, and I'll get into more description of it. I have not read any of the comics, but it seems like they really did what they could to put a lot of stuff from the comics onto the small screen, and it certainly is cool. It's a very fun gaming experience. I mean, it took a little while, but the more I played it, the more I found myself getting into it. And then it ended, but yeah. It's not much longer than a Max Payne game. Basically, you are fighting on New Earth. That's where you are for the entire game, this big planet of various different situations of desolation. You know, there's a desert, there's a petrified forest, there are some cities, and more commonly some ruins of cities, and yeah, the planet is of immense strategic importance because it is quite close to a black hole, and it has been discovered back in 2080, that these black holes can be used to transport to anywhere in the galaxy. You know, in the future, or the past, we learned how to utilize them. You know, they're no longer just dangerous and unpredictable. So, both the Norths and the Souths want this place. And... Basically, because of this importance, it's been nuked so many ways, so many times, there is no natural life left on this thing. There are some mutated life forms, like spiders that are about this big, and very aggressive life forces, life forms. And really, other than those, and the human soldiers, with their thick safety gear on, including oxygen tanks because the air is not breathable, if you want some fun, shoot 
a hole in one of those oxygen tanks. The guy will not be able to do anything because he'll be busy just trying to fix it, and he can't. And maybe two seconds later, he will fly off. The only thing is, it makes it a little less likely that you'll get salvage from him, especially if he lands elsewhere. More on salvage later. Those two groups, and then you, the GIs, the genetic infantrymen, and women. And apparently, the women do not wear any undies. I don't know, I guess in war you just have to save everywhere, I'm not complaining. Blue skin, no need for any kind of breathing apparatus or you know, armor. Thick skin, I don't know if the blue and the thick go together, maybe it's a form of camouflage, I don't know. They also have these glowing white pupils. I don't know. Camo, something, I don't know. And a biochip. And these are, you know, clones. You see the clone babies. The biochip stores the AI of one of these, or the brain anyway, and also the abilities. And what happens is that you, the titular rogue, Yes, his name really is Rogue, and he's gone Rogue. And that was about as clever as they could get. He picks up three of his buddies' biochips, and he attaches them to his gun, his helmet, and his backpack. His backpack can now produce ammo and upgrade, in addition to keeping the map and keeping track of the objectives, which, by the way, it tends to not really tell you directly, it just you have to go check for yourself, so sometimes you're, if you're running around not knowing where to go, it's because you haven't checked the objectives since last time. A little annoying. Provided you get salvage for these upgrades and production of ammo, which you get from any soldier dead, your own men do not provide as much salvage as the other sides, and you know, machines, vehicles, you know, whatever you destroy and can get close to and it doesn't completely disappear, you can get salvage from. And sometimes there are also just broken things somewhere in the battlefield and you can find the salvage. The helmet is a sort of hacking thing. He takes the helmet off, places it on a keyboard, and he can open a door or he can you know, enter a computer. It also allows a hologram copy of Rogue, which can attract sniper fire, which you'll know by laser laser sight. You know, you'll see the laser. If you ever see that on Rogue, you'll just want to dive out of the way. Fortunate though that the dive out of the way button is the same as the action button and yeah sometimes when you're trying to do something you might accidentally do the opposite that's unfortunate anyway this hologram doesn't seem to work absolutely perfectly because I haven't really found a way to turn it off other than to just let it run out of power and then you can't use it for a little while but you can attract enemy fire with it and you know follow the laser, you know, you'll know the angle, and you'll find him, and you do have a sniper. And the gun, it offers a sort of assisted aim, auto-aim, and if you're pointing to either the oxygen tank or the head of an enemy soldier, or in general just if you're pointing to a weak spot with the regular rifle, or possibly also the shotgun. Anyway, you will get a little icon letting you know that this is where you should shoot. And the gun is also a sentry gun. You can put it anywhere you want. It only takes a couple of seconds to put there and to pick back up. When you've put it down, 
it will offer 360 degrees worth of cover, but you will only yourself be armed with the pistol, and the pistol is not that useful, so keep that in mind. But it is very efficient if you're like if you're covering a door. Maybe I should at this point point out that the game is indeed entirely linear, and so is the multiplayer co-op. More on that later. The you do also fight vehicles. Basically, the those underground armor personal personnel carriers from Tiberian Sun. Those are in this, and you know, I think they are called drill or drillers. And yes, they will show up right in front of you. You know, dig up right in front of you land a bunch of troops. I don't know if you can destroy the drill. I have never been able to. I've never... I may have always been busy just getting the heck away from the thing because it's armed with a machine gun on either side and sometimes these drills don't actually go away until you've killed all the troops that it brought with it. There are these jets that you can shoot down and submarines. For shooting down some of the bigger ones you will need either an emplacement or the SAMI, which is a heat-seeking missile launcher. It takes a couple of seconds to lock on, but once it does, as long as it doesn't have to make any corners, it's gonna hit it. Now, you might also need more than one missile to take down what you're firing at, but, yeah. And, in addition to that, you also get a beam rifle. It's basically your, your average electrical weapon in a futuristic sci-fi game. Now, excuse me, much to say there. Then there is the shotgun and the mortar. And the mortar, you basically tell it. You know, you point to the enemy you want to shoot at, and he will automatically shoot in an arc above it. You know, if the enemy's here, you're aiming straight at him, you shoot, it'll automatically go in an arc. And like three shells will be unleashed. That can also be used for taking out the mechs. And by the way, the mechs and the jets and the drills do also show up in co-op multiplayer. And so do the sentry towers, the snipers, and the machine gun nests. The, the mechs can also be taken out with scrambler grenades, which are basically like EMP. Do note, it will not take them completely out. You still have to go and actually kill the guy inside it before it you know, just powers up again. So, yeah. And there are also sticky grenades, which will, as the title alludes to, stick to any surface of an enemy, even sometimes if you don't hit that enemy directly. There are, of course, frag grenades, you have micro mines, which you can trigger yourself from a distance. And there are incendiary grenades, and yes, these do set the enemy on fire. Now, the gun emplacements. Basically, you can take over any machine gun nest you find. Then there are the flak cannons for shooting down jets, the hell cannon, I think it's called, for such things as submarines and also jets. And that might be about it. Now the sentry towers, basically they're gonna shoot at you if they know where you are and they know where you are if you're too close to them unless you take out the laser sensor on top of them 
at that point they won't be able to see you. They will still be operating, but they can't find you. And you can then go and destroy it by you know, sticking your arm inside, tearing out some of the vital machinery to it. Now, you do not get to ride any vehicles yourself, unfortunately. Only the gun emplacements. But for, I think, at least two levels of single player, not multiplayer, unfortunately, you do get to protect vehicles from on the vehicles or in the vehicles. Either you have a gun emplacement or you run around on top of something with several gun emplacements that you have to go back and forth between. These levels are really tough, but they are also pretty fun. I just wish they had implemented them in multiplayer, especially if like one of them could drive the vehicle, you know, get the jet safely to a specific location, or even if just both players or all four players that had a turret each, you know, that'd be cool too. The game can be challenging, and sometimes it's because the 360 degree camera is a bit irritating because there's no center view in this. Basically, it turns equally fast each time. I mean, you can adjust it, but it'll just be yeah, you know. So if you're suddenly in a dangerous situation, you have to very quickly look in a different direction, you kind of can't. And you're likely to just get shot a bunch unless you can get to safety without knowing exactly where you're going. Because the controls are basically you can walk in any direction you can. It's not just walking forward. And Rogue pretty much moves equally fast, no matter which of the four main directions he's going. So Now, the co-op, basically, there are only five levels. Yeah, but they're basically all good in one way or another. More or less. There's at least one of the so-called progressive levels that are really, really awesome. Now, before I scare anyone with such a political-sounding name, progressive in this game means that you have to get from point A to point B, pretty much like in the single-player portion, without dying on the way. Although in multiplayer, you do have several lives. And basically, you have to work together to get past these areas, because it's not just wave after wave of enemies. The enemy knows you're coming and they've positioned themselves tactically you know you have to fight past obstacles that might not be that likely for you to get past if you're just one person you know or if you're not working together with the others by the way multiplayer split screen i don't know not that great of an idea i think because well i only played it with two and that was annoying enough with the camera I don't even want to think about how just pure punishing this must be if you're playing as four players, you know, trying to turn the camera constantly with the, yeah. Anyway, so there are three progressive levels and then two of the so-called Stronghold. Now, Stronghold is not as fun as it sounds. It's basically protective duty for one GI, and they are really freaking tough. I haven't been able to complete one of those yet. And it's, you know, with a set time limit. What makes it so tough is that the enemy is constantly coming at you and they use both, you know, they use regular soldiers, they use vehicles, and they use sentry towers. So there's constantly something for you to fight from almost any direction. Now, the... that more or less covers it, so... Multiplayer changes a few things. It's more action-oriented, so it moves faster. There is no... There's no hologram, nothing, and the... The... 
the producing of or upgrading you know, the producing of ammo or upgrading of abilities does not happen at all. There's also no collecting salvage. Instead, to get more ammo and such, you have to pick up pickups, yeah, power-ups. And this is okay, but they again placed it on the A button, so if you don't position yourself per perfectly, you're gonna jump or dodge out, excuse me, out of the way, and that's just really annoying, especially when, excuse me, there isn't a lot of time to be messing around with it. I really wish that they had basically made a lot of the ac activate things, either done a different button for it, or just made a lot of them, especially the salvage things, just walk across the thing, you know? I mean, what happened to that? We used to be quite happy with picking up things by just walking across them in games. Anyway, there is a cover mode and from it you can blind fire, you can toss grenades, though unaimed, more grenade aimed, just a few. And the, the, the covering is just way too cover hu happy, you know, it's just constantly hugging the wall. It's basically if you walk into it and, you know, keep pressing in that direction. So, if you're walking in a direction where you don't know there's a wall, you're gonna hug it. Even if you don't want to, and the way to get out of that is to walk in the opposite direction. Because if you flick the nunchuck, which you might do, like, you know, oh, stop that! You're gonna to toss a grenade, and yeah, you might kill yourself just because you couldn't see the direction you were going in. Now, oh, and in addition to blind fire, you can also do aimed fire over obstacles that you're taking cover behind. On grenade aiming, basically you hold the nunchuck vertically, I guess, yeah. And if you put it down to horizontally, you're gonna not aim anymore. The thing is, this takes way too long. If you're, if you have to aim and toss grenade really fast, doing this isn't because you kind of have to pick it up slow. At least that was my experience with it. And the aiming is good, but it's really reliant on the pointer, the Wiimote pointer. So if you move this hand, any while you're throwing with this hand it's not going to go exactly where you want it to and sometimes the exact precision of it is really important so that's very annoying and yeah you can control with the control stick how far the grenade goes and with the pointer you can aim pretty Precisely, you just have to hold your hand very still. And if you don't aim, it's also just flicking the nunchuck to toss the grenade. And that basically covers it. Yeah. Yes, your three buddies do talk to you during the missions, but it's not as annoying as that offhand sounds. There are not a lot of unlockables, not really a lot of replayability. There are, you know, more difficulty settings. I've only completed it once, so I've only unlocked one difficulty setting. And then there were three cheats. Hippie Blood, Low Gravity Ragdoll, and Extreme Ragdoll. And all three of those really speak for themselves. You know, they, they're self-explanatory. I have to wonder if the Extreme Ragdoll isn't just the main setting, Rebellion, the company who made both this and Judge Dredd vs. Dredd vs. Death, Judge Dredd, Dredd vs. Death, used in that game, because man did the enemies go flying when I shot them. Anyway, yeah, apparently they do have several 2000 AD licenses, and with how relatively good they're doing on them, I say keep them coming, you know. If I see another one from Rebellion, 
with the 2000 AD license, I'm like likely to buy it, really. And that basically covers the game, so that was my spoiler for review of Rogue Trooper, Quarzo Massacre. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.